All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Chris King. I am the president of the Democratic Business Council of Northern Virginia. I want to welcome you to a brand new series we're doing in light of the coronavirus crisis. We're calling it DemBiz Briefs, and it's meant to be a very short uh, and timely updates from the ground in Northern Virginia about what's happening to small businesses. And uh, we'll hear from elected officials, small business owners. And uh, today I want to introduce the first guest we've got on the program. That is uh, Rob Krupika who is a former member of the Alexandria City Council, also a former member of the Virginia House of Delegates and a small business owner. Rob, thanks so much for taking some time out. I know you're very, very busy uh, with your businesses these days. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I think this is a great idea. Okay, great. So why don't, just to kind of set the table, can you give a very brief overview of what your businesses are, how many stores, how many employees, so on and so forth? Sure. So pre, uh, pre-COVID, I had uh, three locations, Alexander, Arlington, and D.C., offering uh, really two different concepts. One was a uh, cafe bakery concept that primarily sold donuts, which was what people know me for. And then the second sugar is a- Sugar Shack, correct? It was Sugar Shack, and now it's transitioned. It's now uh, the, the Sugar Shack model uh, kind of has gone away, and now we've moved to a new model called Elizabeth's Counter, which is a full-day cafe. So we still have donuts, but we also are serving burgers and bowls and food kind of all day long, which was important to us for the Northern Virginia customer base. We wanted to be able to provide food all day, and this gives us a chance to do that. So pre-COVID, we were transitioning all of our stores to Elizabeth's Counter, uh, the D.C. store, the Arlington store, the Alexandria store, I also have a bar in DC and I have a bar in Alexandria called Captain's Gregor Captain Gregory's in Alexandria. It's called Nocturne in DC. Uh, and I had about 30 employees. Post COVID, I've got six employees. Uh, my DC store is shut down. My Arlington store is shut down. And uh, Alexandria is what I have running. And we're primarily transitioned to an entirely takeout model. The bar is not operating. Uh, and we're we're doing takeout and delivery and our delivery business is growing exponentially like every week so okay. the delivery consumers are getting the delivery concept which is great we were a little worried that people wouldn't grasp um or get excited about delivery but they seem to be embracing it which is which is really good for us um we had to shut the other two stores for kind of just really simple market economics questions the bottom fell out of the market um and you know, the week leading up to the closure of schools and things like that, our sales were dropping by double digits every day. And wow. they just kept going. Every day was worse than the day before. And we kept thinking it can't get any worse, and then it got worse. So we, we, we were faced with a, with a question to, for ourselves of, can we keep these stores operating viably, even if it is a delivery model? Like the, mo the bottom has fallen so far out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we had that issue. We also had a capacity issue, which is, we, we couldn't afford the management capacity it would take to manage all of those stores. So we essentially decided to save our best store that had the best um, market opportunity, which was Alexandria. And we closed the other ones with the hope that maybe we can open them again after COVID is over, but we're not sure. I, I, I can't tell you today. I know for certain that I'm going to be able to open those stores again. Um, but that's that's generally what happened. And, and and we are still living in this world where every day is a new business challenge. The only good thing is, uh, at least for us, the market seems to have stabilized a little bit. Like okay. I'm seeing, like my week over week sales are improving, which is a nice thing. It's not dramatic. It's not the kind of thing that lets me rehire all my staff, but it's a lot better than declining. And, and I'll take it and I'm grateful for it. Uh, so we're trying to evaluate the market as it changes every day. And if we can grow a little bit more, we can earn back some of that, some, some of that customer base, uh, we will be able to, um, hire back some employees, which we're hoping, you know, is something we're looking forward to being able to do. Okay. Well, and I, and I definitely want to get back to that because, uh, you know, I want to, I want to know the path to, uh, rebuilding things back up. Um, but first I want to ask you about the stimulus. So. Uh, is it clear to you what's in it and what is your view of how much it will or will not help you? So, I mean, it, it gives me money for two months to cover kind of some core necessities, staff, um, utilities, 
and uh, my rent, basically. And maybe some other miscellaneous fixed costs, if we can make the argument that they're legitimate business expenses, they may, they may cover, be covered as well. We're not sure yet. Okay. That helps me. I mean, it certainly helps me. It, it, it gives me a little bit more slack with my landlords. Paying my utility bills is a good thing to be able to do because I'm not able to pay them right now. Uh, and, and that all that all lowers kind of the the pile up of bills that is growing on my desk. So so in that regard, it's it's helpful. It doesn't provide me enough money to really start up again. And because it's only two months worth, and we've got a stay in your house order that goes way beyond two months right now, mm-hmm. um, I can't I can't say that it's it's gonna give me enough money to start up again. It's not startup money. Because the challenge of starting up the stores that have closed is I've got to hire back everyone. I've got to train everyone. I've got to find managers again. And maybe I can find the same people, but maybe I can't. Like there's mm-hmm. no guarantee the same people are going to be available. So I'm going to have a, a big learning curve kind of just in assembling the staff. And then you have to buy, buy equipment and supplies and everything else. And if you can't, let's say June 11th, we can go back to work. I'm not going to have all my supplies in place because my suppliers aren't going to be ready. I'm not right. going to have all my staff in place. It's going to take a mat. It's going to take weeks to assemble that stuff. I mean, it takes weeks to st- takes months and weeks to turn on a new store. It's mm-hmm. essentially like turning on a new store with the difference being when I turn on a new store, I've got money in the bank. I've got runway right. in the bank to pay for, to pay for all of the miscellaneous things that happen when you're starting up a store, when you're building the market back, when you're trying to do your marketing and all those kinds of things. I'm supposed to reopen my DC store and my Arlington store with no runway, like, like literally with a, with a bank account that is on zero and, and then, and, and hire all my staff back before I'm able to make money. And so there's, I've talked about this a lot. Um, cause I, I've been commiserating with other restaurant owners I mean, we're all working hard and, you know, I think restaurant owners are some of the most innovative, creative people out there. They work, they're, they're super entrepreneurial. They're all trying everything under the sun to stay afloat and to keep their employees paid. And it's really impressive to see. It's like, I feel really blessed to be a part of this community cause it's really amazing. But when we get to that day where they tell us, okay, go ahead, you can open now. We all, with some exceptions have zero in our bank account to do all the things you have to do to rebuild the store because we've so, had to spend, spend it all. So what do you, what do you need then? Would, would that require a second stimulus or is there some other path to getting money in the pockets of people like you to reopen? Yeah, no, I, so I think there's probably, there's probably two big things that have to be discussed from a policy standpoint. One is some kind of startup loans that are forgivable because the other thing you can't do is take low margin businesses like mine and just rack me with debt. Like I, I can't carry how, you know, only so much small business loan debt before mm-hmm. I'm dead anyway. Like I, I, I'm a small margin business that's, as most restaurants are. Mm-hmm. Um, the, so there's going to have to be some kind of cash, a startup cash infusion loans available. But the second thing, and this is the one that's I think the mo- more radical idea that I've talked about a lot, but I think it's something we have to look at is everyone is going to show up to that day where we've, we're told we can start again with bills that haven't been paid and probably a pretty good pile of them. And we're going to all have to make a couple choices. Do we just shut our doors and let all those bills die, which we, which is an option. Mm -hmm. Do we go in and try to start again and figure out a way to pay those bills back, which could be a real burden on a lot of small businesses starting up again, or do we go bankrupt, which is not always kind of a convenient, um, option for folks uh, and try to restructure so that I get those bills on my back. I think there's going to be a need for some type of reset button bankruptcy option. And, I, and I've said this before, and it's probably too early in the process for folks to put their head around it. But, but when you get to that day where you're having to make a decision, do I open or not? And one of the factors is how much debt you have to deal with because you're, you, you've been COVID has forced you to just accumulate debt at a rapid rate Mm -hmm. and you're a small margin business. If there is a way to wipe the slate clean and say, okay, I've pressed the bankruptcy reset button for COVID. I can start the day. I can start my first day opening, reopening my store with no debt and maybe a little runway in the bank. Then it's maybe worth doing like that. Mm -hmm. That that becomes valid. But if I have to decide, 
if, if I have runway, but I still have a pile of debt, I still may not open again. If I have um, the debt cleared away, but no runway, I still may not open again. You kind of have to deal with both runway issue as well as the debt issue to put someone in a position where they, they can feel comfortable opening. Right. And how have you dealt with landlords? And I don't know if you have a, a small business loan, but how have you dealt with your lenders? Yep. No, that's a great question. So I do have a small business loan with a local community bank. They've been great. Um, you know, I, I, I prefer working with local community banks. They, they tend to be really, uh, they, they tend to be more understanding and they're part of the, you know, they're my, they're my customers as much as they are my banker. Uh, and they've put me on, all I'm paying is interest payments. And okay. they've been, so they've been great. Um, my landlords, I have three landlords because I have DC, I have Arlington and I have Alexandria. Two of those landlords are local. My local landlords have been really accommodating, like just Good. Am amazingly supportive and, and, and they get it. And they got it right at the beginning. They didn't, it wasn't even like I had to beg them or have multiple conversations. They really got it. And I think, that, again, the fact that they're local helps. My one landlord that is a national landlord um, took them a little bit longer to kind of get their head around what they were going to do. They, they were certainly talking like they were going to force me to pay rent for a while. And now what they've done is they've put my rent in a, um, in a bucket where I have to pay it back. I just don't have to pay it now. And that's, okay. that's a good start. And to the extent that the federal money lets me pay that rent bucket down, then, then I'll, be, I'll be okay with those guys too. But the landlords, I think, have generally been good. I have heard that not all landlords have been able to do that. And I, I have a good friend who's a landlord, and he has restaurants who um, are in his building. And he told me the other day that they asked for rent abatement and he can't give it because he doesn't, he's not getting abatement from his mortgage. Right. So, so the trickle down for him doesn't work. He, he's not getting any kind of relief. So he can't give relief to his tenants. And that's a tough, he wants to be able to give relief, mm -hmm. but he also has to pay his bills too. And that's a tough spot to be in. I, I fortunately haven't found that problem. Okay. So let's, let's move forward a little bit and game this out. Uh, next few weeks, next couple of months, what is the timeline as you see it? And uh, what is the likelihood? So this is, a, this is a market issue. This is not, there was no demand for your product. Uh, you didn't know what you were doing. This is circumstances moving in on you. So yep. theoretically, you, you could, let's assume you still have the space. Uh, some money comes along. Uh, how do you how do you see this playing out in a likely scenario over the next couple of weeks, couple of months in terms of being able to ramp back up, being able to or having to scale back maybe a little more? What do you see there? Yeah, no, th th those are good questions. So for the Alexandria store, which is running now, my hope is that over the next two months, as we kind of wait out our stay in place um, order, that our delivery business is going to keep growing like it's growing now. And my order, uh, takeout order business is gonna keep growing like it's growing now. And I'm gonna be able to hire some staff back. I won't be at a full complement of staff, but I'll be okay. able to start hiring staff back so that when this whole thing ends, I'll be able to move into a full run kind of pretty quickly, you know, as long as the market's there, customer base is there. Um, the other two stores are gonna be harder. I, for, for the most part, I'm just trying to keep them dormant um, as clean and organized as I can. I might do some physical repairs on the spaces. I mm -hmm. take advantage of this time to do some construction work, um, elect electrical work, that kind of thing. Might, might as well. And, right. um, and then hope that I can, uh, when we get the all clear order, hope that I can, you know, I, I've got my runway and I, I'm in a position where I can start turning those on. I may turn both of them on. I may just turn one of them on. Um, you know, if I have to close, I guess my thought process is if I have to close my Alexandria store, if something were to happen, it, so let's say we get a, a stay in place order where people literally can't leave the house. That's, that's, a, that's a good one to, because that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, people can't leave the house anymore. Well, about 50% of my business right now is takeout. So maybe that becomes delivery. Maybe I lose a good bit of my business. And now I'm back to where I was two weeks ago. Um, so I don't, so, so that's, that's something that I have to, that's a change that could have a, have an effect on me that I have to be prepared for. And I think every restaurant owner has to be prepared for it. If, if we get a, an order that prevents takeout, um, you know, we're all, the, those of us who are still able to operate, you know, are, are in trouble. Yeah. Um, well, let's certainly hope it doesn't come to that. 
Uh, all right, so last question, uh, yeah. and I'll give you the last word at the end, but, but in terms of, uh, is there a positive in this? Uh, you know, I think it, it's useful to at least look for some opportunity. You mentioned kind of revamping a couple of your stores. Um, is there opportunity in this that people maybe don't see yet? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I, I think the incredible amount of creativity and entrepreneurship that's happening in the food service industry right now mm -hmm. will lead to innovations. And I think that'll be exciting. Uh, I think it's great that customers are really being introduced to online ordering and delivery. You know, that was a important part of our market, but it was nowhere near what it is now. And I would have, I, I would would imagine that's going to continue going forward as soon as people get comfortable and they got two months to practice how to order online um, I think that that's going to become a bigger part of our market uh, we're looking at doing a major construction renovation to Captain Gregory's our bar because we can because no one's using it right now uh, that's an opportunity that if you've got the cash to take advantage of it's a great time to do it well that was my uh, next question do you have capital for that I've got an invest. I've got some investor capital that will help okay. me with it. Yeah. Um, okay. The the bar does really well when it's functioning, so I just need to get it operating again. Right. Um, the the uh, so I think there's a lot of innovation, you know, happening, and I think that that innovation is going to bear fruit for a long time for people. And I my my the team that I have in place is really solid. They're getting a lot of great training and and they're having to do a little bit of everything more so than they would have to in a normal circumstance. They're going to be great managers for me when this all opens up because they're going to know how everything runs really, really well. And I see that as a positive too. It's not my ideal training scenario. It's not how I would want to do it, but it's certainly going to be a big training uh, opportunity for the staff that's currently working with me. Yeah. And it will certainly help in their careers going forward as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, all right. So as I mentioned earlier, I want to keep these uh, fairly brief and we'll definitely want to check it in with you again, uh, maybe a few weeks or a month down the road. But in the meantime, I want to give you the last word here. Uh, is there something people need to know? Is there something that needs to be conveyed to people who are watching this? I, I think the biggest thing is please support your local neighborhood restaurants. Uh, you know, everyone is working really hard to support the community. Restaurants are giving food away um, to folks who need it. There's all sorts of charitable work happening. And there's a lot of creative, creativity and innovation going on to provide really good meals to people who are stuck at home. And I would just encourage folks to take advantage of that as best they can. It is a lot harder for a restaurant to start up again once they've closed their doors mm -hmm. than if they can stay operating even at a small scale. And uh, I feel really bad about the guys who've had to close completely because I think that's a tougher they got a tougher nut to to, to deal with um so keep keep the doors open in the in the restaurants that you can <laughs> yeah totally agree all right rob krupika owner of sugar shack and elizabeth's counter correct uh just as we're kind of transitioning counter, yeah. through yeah yeah we, the transition's pretty much done okay all right well that's good yeah. thanks so much for joining us uh as, as i mentioned before we'll check in with you again best of luck to you and your your businesses Thank you. Have a great day. All right, you too.